Hey guys, Ed Budd here, and I'm back with my initial review of the Nike Pegasus 36 Shield. Welcome friends, old and new, Ed Budd here. So, gonna give you my initial review on the Pegasus 36 Shield. I literally just arrived. It's one of the shoes that I selected to purchase for testing purposes after the recent viewer poll. Uh, obviously, on top came out the Rincon. That has now arrived. Here it is. It's a very, very light shoe. I'll say that. Um, but I will be testing this one very soon. This one did arrive first, so it was first onto the test bed. So really ideal conditions at the moment for a review of a shoe like this. The weather's really turned quite nasty um, over the last couple of days. There's been a bit of a storm this morning as well, lots of rain, lots of wind. So I'll be taking the shoe out again straight away after I finish doing this video. The 36 Shield's obviously very similar in terms of midsole to the Pegasus 36. Uh, standard version so I'll try and avoid talking too much about that you guys know about that midsole it's the same one that was used on the Pegasus 35 and the 35 shield from last year lots of different weatherized modifications to this shoe though as you'll see from the upper they've attempted to remove any kind of stitching release the upper on the original 36 is kind of a woven mesh style material here we've got a kind of almost neoprene type material at the very front everything else is weatherized so you've got a, a water repellent kind of upper right across the shoe both sides slightly different lacing arrangement as well gone are the fly wires here you've got loops uh, reminiscent of the terra Kiger 5 no stitching on the seams you've got a non-stitch seams uh, probably to help block out the water help to repel it a little more other main modifications include this weatherized rubberized outer so it's a very similar pattern to that on the pegasus 36 standard version what i would say is that though the perforated sections here on the outsole certainly are slightly thinner but longer than that on the Pegasus 36. There is quite a difference there, uh, whether that's with a sort of weatherized traction in mind, I don't know. It could just be some sort of weird production issue, but certainly on closer inspection, the ones on the 36 Shield are longer and thinner. I think one caveat to this shoe, um, certainly in terms of the outsole, is it, I'm getting loads and loads of debris, uh, small rocks and things getting wedged into the perforations here. I mean, it's not a major issue, but I think over time, you know, you're gonna have to spend a bit of time with a toothpick or something, getting all these pieces out. There's loads of them in there, bits of wood and twigs and rocks and stuff. I think the rubberized material perhaps just allows those in a little bit more. The gaps between the perforated parts seem a little bit wider than the standard Pegasus 36. It's a 10 mil drop with this shoe, exactly as per the Pegasus 36 standard version. There's a load of reflective elements as well on the shoe, just to help increase visibility of runners uh, during perhaps night running. It's gonna help keep you more visible as those murky nights draw in. So before taking the shoe out, obviously I was very excited and interested to see whether the traction was improved from the Pegasus 36 standard version. Traction wasn't really all that bad in wet conditions with the original 36. So any improvements gonna be good? Okay, let's get to it. So 10 miles today in the Pegasus 36 Shields. It's around about seven minutes, 48 per mile, something like that. So fit and feel of the shoe first. The Pegasus 36 Shield does feel a little more rigid and inflexible than the original standard version of the shoe. I think that's to be expected with the removal of that kind of mesh material. It's certainly in the toe box and it being replaced with that water resistant or water repellent kind of material, the neoprene and this kind of thicker plasticky feeling mesh here at the front. I have to say that the left shoe, when I first put it on, did feel a little bit odd in the kind of midfoot area. I did take out the insole to feel around in the midsole, see if there was anything kind of odd going on there in terms of the midsole unit or the air unit. But I have to say, after about a mile of running in the shoe, it just seemed to just disappear, that wasn't an issue. And that problem seemed to mellow out and disappear completely. I have to say, the shoe, in terms of fit and feel, does feel quite similar to the Pegasus 36 Standard Edition. Aside from that lacing system here, I didn't have too many issues on the left shoe in terms of uh, lacing, but on the right shoe, round about the eighth or ninth mile, I did feel as if things were loosening up a little bit. I don't know whether something had got kind of caught or snagged somewhere in terms of lacing, but it did seem to uh, start to loosen up. Um, I didn't bother retying it. It wasn't that much of an issue. I completed the run um, without having to mess about with it again, but 
just something to consider. The laces that they've included here in the 36 Shield are very slightly different to the ones that you get in the standard version. In terms of the knit feels a little bit different. I'm not sure that that's an intentional thing really um, to further improve the shoe in terms of weatherizing, but uh, it does seem to make a difference in terms of the grip. They did seem to stay locked in together without any issue. Obviously gone are the fly wires on either side of the shoe. They've been replaced by these loops which are very reminiscent of the Terra Kyger 5. Over the 10 miles, my feet stayed really, really dry. Uh, not a lot of moisture managed to get into the shoe. What I found was it was only in this kind of neoprene type section of the shoe at the uh, forefoot here that any water really came in. And when it did, it seemed to be able to get out quite quickly. You know, I was aiming and targeting myself at puddles and sort of leaping into them. A few kids that were going by got a real laugh out of it as well kind of looking at me going, what the hell's he doing, you know? Why is he why is he deliberately jumping in these puddles? Little did they know, it's because I was testing out the 36 Shield. When I got back, there was very little moisture on the socks. Um, they weren't completely dry by any means. They certainly weren't sopping wet at all. My feet were quite dry. Talking of socks though, I did feel the need to switch socks um, before I went out on my initial run in these shoes. I did originally put my Stance Tab socks on. They are a little thicker perhaps than some standard socks, but they were too thick for this shoe. I needed to switch down to my much thinner Nike socks. I just felt that there was almost no room here in the toe box area. It did feel really, really snug. Um, not uncomfortably, but I knew that over time that it would start to become a problem. So I wanna make it very clear, I don't think you need to switch up half a size in this shoe. I think it is relatively true to size. I think it's more to do with the materials that have been switched out here these uh, water repellent materials that are making the shoe feel a little bit more snug, certainly in that toe box area. I AB'd these shoes against the original Pegasus 36 standard edition and it does certainly feel a little bit more snug. Whether that's just because the shoe is very new, but I think the shield is a little more snug in the toe box area. So please do try the shoe out in a bricks and mortar store if you can first. Maybe take a couple of different pairs of socks along so you can see for yourself and see which size is appropriate for you. I'm not sure if it's me being overly familiar with the A6 glide rides that I've been testing out of recent time, but it did feel a little bit of a struggle in the shields initially. The glide rides just propel you forward if you put a little bit of effort into it, but with these, you've got to put a little bit of extra effort to get moving. That side it could have just been me, um, but it could have also been the music selection. I did put on Radiohead's album, A Moon Shaped Pool initially, and it was a little bit too mellow and chilled out uh, for this type of run. So I did switch it up to the Dublin based band, Fontaine's DC, their debut album, and that meant I could pick up the pace, beats per minute and that, uh, that bit faster, and that helped me push through in the second section of the run. I have to say, the shoe did feel familiar to me as I was running in it, it did feel very reminiscent of the Pegasus 36, which is exactly what you'd expect, really. If you're a fan of that midsole from the Peg 35 and the 36 standard version, you'll like this shoe. It will feel familiar to you, it's kind of comforting, um, and it does the job. I think forefoot lockdown, really, was pretty good with the lace loops. It did feel a little different on the forefoot than the 36 standard version, but I have to say, Apart from the shoe loosening up a little bit, I experienced no pain, rubbing, heel slipping issues, anything like that. It was devoid of anything. Just an enjoyable run. Onto midsole and outsole. As I mentioned earlier, the midsole unit is the same as that used on the Pegasus 35 and the 36. It feels comfortable and responsive underfoot. That full length Zoom Air unit, certainly very, very welcoming and provides a reasonable amount of cushioning Certainly not along the lines of something like the Zoom X or perhaps the midsole materials used in something like the Rebel, but it provides a good cushion for an everyday kind of trainer. I think that midsole unit just kind of feels familiar, kind of like watching an old favorite film of yours or perhaps meeting up with a buddy you haven't seen for a while. I got about 300 miles out of my original Pegasus 35 midsole before it started to feel that it was bottoming out a little bit and that Zoom Air unit it got a little tough, kind of like Indiana Jones's leather jacket. What? I think I fully expect around about that level of durability within the Pegasus 36 shield. Traction was really great over the run, uh, through puddles, through water, 
standing water. I did feel a little slipping on some very smooth concrete slabs. It was really great in woodland areas, though thin twigs and leaf stems got caught up in the perforated sections of the outsole very quickly. So do expect your feet and shoes to look like a kid's autumn collage after a woodland run. Running on grass, no problem in these, but alas on some very wet and soggy mud and grass, I did almost take a tumble. Though I think any real road aimed shoe is going to produce similar results. So let's not be too hard on the Pegasus 36 Shield. I think if you've been using the Pegasus 36 as your everyday trainer over the last few months, then the Pegasus 36 Shield certainly a good option for you if you want a weatherized shoe. I think as those autumn winter conditions seem to have appeared relatively early this time round, you'll probably get some good value out of this one. It's not too ridiculously priced, so I think you're good to go. I will of course plow some more miles into the shoe up to around about 100 or so and then give you an update on my thoughts. Please drop your comments below and I will endeavor to answer any questions that you may have. Please remember to subscribe, like and share to other runners. Many thanks for watching, I really do appreciate it. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.